Hello everybody, Andrea Trowski here with Dental L Tutoring. Let's talk about some um, unmet human needs. So this is something you have to know for the board exam. Maybe not for the real world specifically because it's not like when you're in school when you had to write down those unmet human needs over and over and over again. So you may not have to do that, but for the board exam, yes, you have to know them and you have to understand them. But even for the office, you do need to understand the differences of the eight unmet human needs and, and sort of the category they tie into. So if the patient's in pain, what unmet human need is that? If the patient's in pain and has bleeding and doesn't understand why they need a cleaning, those are three separate unmet human needs. So let's talk about them. So. Let me share my screen here. Let's see. Looking for my unmet human needs. So can everybody see my screen okay? I'm going to enlarge my video as well so that you can all kind of see me. Let's change things around a little bit. No, I guess it was better before. There we go. Um, okay, so let's talk about the eight human needs. Okay, so I hope that everybody can see this okay. Um, I do have this on Facebook as well, and my board exam prep members do have this. But um, so number one is wholesome facial image. So if the patient says anything about the appearance of their teeth, their smile, how things look, how things are shaped, they may say their teeth are too big or too small. They may say they don't like the yellow color of their teeth. They may say they don't like the spaces in between their teeth. They may think their teeth look too close together. Who knows? But anything having to do with their smile or, or how things look, that is wholesome facial image. Number two is uh, conceptualization and understanding. So if they have questions about their oral self-care, if they have questions about their oral hygiene, if they have questions about their teeth, their mouth, anything like that, pretty much if they have questions, that is number two. Number three, a responsibility for oral health. So this is a big one and pretty much every patient will probably have this. So this is talking about if they have any plaque, any tartar, if they have bleeding, if they have pockets, if they have clinical attachment loss, if they have recession. So anything in their mouth that's not healthy this, this is number three, so responsibility for oral health. Let's just say your patient has minimal plaque, minimal calculus. That is still something, right? So they need to know that they have that plaque and calculus, and they are responsible for getting that under control. Number four, biologically sound and functional dentition. So if the patient says that their tooth is sore and they're, and, and they're having trouble chewing on the left-hand side, or let's say they're missing a tooth or two on the right-hand side and they're having trouble chewing. If they're clenching their, their teeth or grinding, or if they have um, an amalgam filling that is starting to leak, if they have a composite filling that has been in there for 30 plus years and they need to get it repaired, if they have dentures that don't fit. So anything inside the mouth that's not working properly, okay? This is number four. Number five, freedom from head and neck pain. So this is if the patient's in pain at all. So if they have sensitive teeth, if they tell you their tooth hurts, if they tell you they're cold sensitive. So sensitivity and pain is the same thing. And anytime a patient tells you they're in pain, this is number one that has to be looked at. So for the real world too, so for the board exam, for any case study type of questions, if your patient's in pain, that's number one thing to look at. So even if your patient's in pain and they have a seven millimeter pocket, that seven millimeter pocket is number two. Pain is always number one. Even if they say, you know what, my main concern is that my teeth need to be whiter, but my left um, molar on the top hurts. Pain is always number one. Now, pain and the chief complaint are very close together, okay? So on the board exam, uh, that's always a tricky one because do you put the pain first or do you put that the patient says that they want 
lighter teeth. Their chief concern is that they want their teeth to be whiter, but when they're telling you that they're in pain, that is actually, again, number one. Because if they're telling you they're in pain, pain is never a good thing and they want that done first. Even if they don't know that they want the pain dealt with first, they do. Because even if their chief complaint is that they want a lighter smile, they want their teeth whiter, but their second, I guess, complaint is that their uh, first molar hurts, you know. Let's say you whiten the teeth. Well, that molar still hurts, right? So that's not good. But if you fix the pain point first, the patient, they'll be happy. And then, yes, you can do the whitening because that is what the patient wants. They will still be happy. So pain is always first and chief complaint or chief concern is second. Um, number six, so protection from health risks. This is a big one, but it's not, I guess, a very common one per se. So if the patient needs antibiotics and they didn't take them before their appointment, this is number six. So protection from health risks, they need to take that. Now, they don't have to take it half an hour or an hour before. It, it is a good idea to do so, but they don't have to. They can take it in the office at that time. Um, let's say their blood pressure is too high. That is number six, so protection from health risks. Let's say they haven't had a doctor's appointment in eight years. That is protection from health risk because they may think they're healthy, but if they haven't seen a doctor in eight years, they don't know if they have high blood pressure. They don't know if they have low blood pressure. They don't know if they have high cholesterol, none of that. So they need to be seeing a family doctor. Number seven, skin and mucous membrane integrity of the head and neck. So this is a big one. So if they have any um, lesions, both inside the mouth, outside the mouth, if they have swelling, if there's bleeding on probing, if they have gingivitis, perio, if they have eight millimeter pockets, if they have four millimeter pockets, if they have xerostomia. So this is skin and mucous membrane integrity of the head and neck. This one is very close to number four. So let me just show you guys that. So number four, so biologically sound and functional dentition, and number seven, skin and mucous memory integrity of the head and neck are very, very close. Um, it's hard to separate the two, but think about it more. Number seven, think about, um, sorry, you might hear my dog here. Number seven, think about, hmm, how can I say this? Um, more the tissues and the hygiene part of it. But number four is more something that, the dentist would be fixing. So if they have a filling that needs to be repaired, if they're clenching or grinding, if their dentures don't fit, that is more number four. But if their gums are bleeding, that is something that your um, dental hygienist or you can take care of. Um, number seven would be, again, if the gums are bleeding, if they have gingivitis and perio. So all of those things, they don't have to see the dentist for it, but they can see you for it, right? So either the dental hygienist, the dental assistant, you know, but it's not something that you have to book them a separate appointment with the dentist. And number eight, so freedom from anxiety and stress. So if the patient is nervous, that is freedom from anxiety and stress. If they're, um... Let's say they're concerned about how you sterilize the instruments. That's a concern. They have anxiety. So freedom from anxiety and stress. So do those all make sense? So I don't want to make the video too long for you because I just sort of wanted to keep it simple. Um, and I feel that I gave pretty good examples on that. But if anybody isn't sure about a couple of these or you're not sure, just let me know because I do teach a full course on this in um, the Board Exam Prep Academy, if that is something that you would like to sign up for. Because I know in school, it can be very overwhelming, but I promise you guys, it's so easy. Um, you don't often have to write the human needs um, in practice, but some offices do have it, so you do have to write them in there. You don't have to be as specific as you were in school, but they may want you to write, say, uh, freedom from anxiety and stress, and then say the patient's nervous. You know, you don't have to write, um, they have this unmet human need due to evidence by, that is more for school, but for the real world, you may have to actually write these, but just not as specific. 
So I hope that helped. I, I will stop my screen share. Let me just stop the share here. And yeah, I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions, let me know and stay tuned for the next video.